Ooh, what is up, you guys? And of course, welcome to another Pocket Topics from your truly Vesca Render. And today's video is a bit different, of course. We're going to talk about bad plays being rewarded. Now, this is a concept that um, it's kind of hard to grasp because people kind of get salty, you know, when it comes to this in mind because people don't necessarily want to agree when they're doing a bad play, but they're easily easy to spot and there are ways to go about it to notice them. And uh, whether or not the player is aware of it being a bad play or not, it's kind of unrelated and not really, uh, not really important for this in mind. You know, I do bad plays myself a lot, really. Uh, doing over prediction is not necessarily a bad play, but definitely up there when it comes to do the safe play over, of course, the over prediction. And just overall, you know, we all can do weird plays. That we kind of realize as we push, of course, the magic button that is accept and okay that shit, this was the worst play of my options. Now, the reason I kind of want to go into this concept is because I have two videos that I can showcase when it isn't as pleasant, of course, which, you know, it's always a factor. And um, I really just want to talk about these plays myself. Now, the reason really for it is because, of course, of uh, Nappy's battle in UCL not so long ago. Now, I'm not attacking Nappy by any chance, but I have to say that when somebody is arguing that they were the better player or the, did a better place overall uh, and decided or by default deserves to win then we get into a different concept a different dialogue and uh, you could be oblivious to it or very very arrogant but for my money it's kind of worth you know at least giving your opponent some kind of chance to redeem themselves and we're gonna go to his uh, battle actually first now the first battle here would of course nappy um, I don't know, I'm so gonna get flagged if you see this, I guess, because I'm just gonna use this raw content. Um, but um, it's nothing really to it. Um, like I said, here he's not. He is in a position here against Patters where he has an air deck against Guard of War. He needs Guard of War um, to win this game, basically, because it, it's a good check. He lost a lot of HP with his Guard of War uh, due to Hitmon top here. Actually, got a bullet punch on it before he got defeated. Uh, that's all fine and dandy, but at this point, he's of course gonna pretty much sack it against, of course, the Aerodactyl that it's facing. Now, here's the thing. Um, you know, it, it looks all fine and dandy, but Petters does a pretty tough call here, and I definitely don't see why he decided to do it. And he's gonna go for, of course, a magical, mysterious, of course, Stone Edge. And like I said there, there, of course, a wing attack or air lace or, you know, even an earthquake will KO this Guard of War. And Nappy has no reason to sack this mod at this point. Guard of War is a great wall breaker for Patter's team. So him going for a risk here, basically sacking it, it's, it's a very, very, very bad play. Because Nappy, like I said, he has no reason of doing this. I mean, he's he has safer switch-ins. But, Pat is going to miss the zone edge, and he's going to really tally with a hyper voice. And the game is pretty much decided here, because Patters now have really nothing they can take on the pressure that Guard Wars is bringing without losing a massive amount of HP. And, uh, like I said, Patters does the worst play, but it, this is the thing. We actually are comparing two bad plays against one another. We have the first situation, which is that Nappy decides to sack them on. He has no reason to sack it. Um, then it's not up there when it comes to the matchup. He has a lot of things that can take on uh, the hits from. Uh, uh, well, I can't even speak. He can't take hits from Derodactyl. Now here's the thing: Paris has a reason to, of course, go for uh, the the Stone Edge. Like I can see the reasons for it. Uh, he had lost almost at this point, but he had Pinsir. He had, of course, the. Um, um, Dragonite, um, Thunderous, and even Empoleon at this point. Now, I don't know if the Empoleon was Shooker Bear or not, highly unlikely, but Empoleon would make sense, even actually Dragonite to that extent would make sense since it had the Marble Scale on it. And, um, yeah, I, I don't really agree with that play. Even Pinsir, you know, you can probably take a Stone and Trisial Quick Attack. Now, he decides, like I said, to sack, of course, this <laughs> or that Mon. And um, I don't agree with that play. I think it's really risky. Consider that this is what, of course, Pat was bringing. He could outspeed Haxorus. He could outspeed Among Us. He could outspeed Cresselia. 
and Megadayenshi, which I believe it was. Um, so he has every reason to not lose Gargor for this matchup. He decides to do it. Like I said, that's that's a bad play. You need that to actually for Gargor to kind of work. Now he decided to go the other way. You know, that's all fine and dandy. But like I said, there, Patters does the worst play. He goes for the unsafe move, not going for the KO on Gargor. Like as like I said, there. I do understand why he went for it, but at that point, really, did he have a reason for it? He would have speed any mana came in afterwards anyway. There was no reason of go not going for an earthquake or even at least like a wing attack or LA's. Now, I don't know Pat's uh, attack moves, but that's the thing. There were so many reasons for him of not doing so. So there are two bad plays in motion. Um, Nappy took this really, really hard because he was... Trying to defend that his play was the better one, which it most certainly definitely wasn't. But the thing is, Patters did a very, very nasty bad play himself. So we re we're actually comparing two bad plays against one another. One is rewarded due to the miss or hacks or whatever. But it just comes to one of those really big motions where Nappy could just have said, yes, my, bad, my play was bad, but Patters did just exactly the same bad play. It would have been fine. Um, like I said, Nappy is, he's an okay battler. He's definitely, you know, he's maybe above average sometimes. We just take a long time for attacking and usually he's very, very bulky when it comes to team build, which makes his Wi-Fi really, really slow. So um, it's not my kind of battle styles. I, I think he's above average when it comes to that kind of play style uh, or better way of doing just so. Um, I'm not saying I'm better. I'm probably above average at best too, but at least I'm more aggressive. And um, it, it just blew my mind when it comes to this kind of situation itself. Now, the other one I want to showcase is actually one where a bad play actually is rewarded. And it has me laughing still. Uh, and it's against, of course, 6 feet hack Leo. Um, I really can't say too much about it. You guys would have to see it yourself. Now, here's from the start of the match. Um, match, match, and Leo here is going to get a situation where he's going to lead up with Skunk Tank against, of course, a Dawn Not, not ideal. Uh, expecting either Stealth Rocks or an Earthquake, he's going to safely go for a Blastoise. Now, there's nothing wrong with that. I do believe that is the correct play to make. It's nothing to it. And that really, really, really blows my mind that, you know, it, and as far as this goes, this is the right play to do. So nothing strange is happening here at all. Um, going to Blastoise, I do believe we got an Earthquake there. Yeah, exactly, sorry. Um, earthquake doesn't do a lot. And here we have the situation. Leo now has a chance. You know, he could threaten this out with either Skull or Water Pulse. I do believe we have Water Pulse in a specific battle. Um, Christian notice, and, you know, it's, it's dangerous to go for Stealth Rocks or Earthquake. She needs to get out because she's going to lose a lot of HP. Even though she has third intact, no reason breaking it against this kind of situation because you could get skull burned, which means your sturd is broken anyway, if that were the case, of course. Uh, now, here's the thing. We get the Mega Evolution going. Um, just need to skip a little bit. Come on. So we get the Mega Evolution. She stays in. Look at Leo here. This is, this is the face of what the hell just happened. Now, of course, Leo goes for Toxic, predicting a switch out. There's nothing really big to it. I would have done the same play. But Christians does stay in, goes for another Earthquake. You know, seeing the damage before, Earthquake didn't really do a whole lot of HP. There was no reason for going for another one since it didn't naturally hurt. So right, well, now of course, turn Magic 2. The reason I say Magic 2 is because, you know, they stay in here. And, uh, yeah, oh, I skipped that. Sorry guys, sorry guys, just gonna ruin it for you. Um, so now, of course, Water Pulse kills, right? Christian needs to get out. Goes for another Toxic, predicted a switch out. No, it keeps going for Earthquake. <laughs> and look at Leo. <laughs> this is a man in complete defeat right now. <laughs> and like I said, her bad plays are being rewarded. <laughs> it's so... <laughs> and I love it. Like I said here, I, I could go about that, you know, Christian makes... Probably one of the worst series of plays ever, but at this point, it just blows my mind. We have a situation where a Dauphin is now actually knocking out Blastoise. Why? Because he thought that, you know, the obvious play is that it shouldn't stay in, but we're not in a situation 
where the dolphin knocks out the blast toys. And I'm sorry, it's... <laughs> this is the face of defeat. I'm sorry, Leo. I'm sorry for doing this to you. <laughs> but this, this is a man who has lost everything. Who has lost simply everything. <laughs> No, the, the battle turns around, and I'll, of course, link this both battle, you know, down below here. But I just really want to showcase you how things can turn about. Now, obviously here, like I said, Leo has no reason of not going for those safe plays. But it's so important to realize when your opponent has no idea what they're doing, or at least not in that extent. He shouldn't start attacking, of course, directly, but not doing so... Um, and predicting the toxic, since it was, to be fair here, we have a situation here where Donphan, in theory, needs to be healthy to take on Tracheon, which Leo does have. She doesn't do that, she's completely oblivious to that fact, keeps going for it quicks, and we now have a situation where, of course, Donphan knocks out the Mega Blast Stars, and it just blows my mind. Like I said there, Leo has... All the reasons to you know, over predict and go for Toxic. It's a safe play. Consider, you know, if you give, you know, the risk and reward situation, it's a big risk leaving in Dolphin and losing it early. But since she is so oblivious to it, and Leo keeps thinking, you not, you not wanna, you don't want to lose this man. Eventually, Leo loses him on. That's <laughs> just fantastic. <laughs> like I said, there, there is nothing wrong with playing badly or, you know, do a bad play themselves. It can't be rewarded. <laughs> but it's important to realize when you're playing badly, too. I, I really, really have to say that. It is important to realize when your opponent makes very, very weird calls. It's important to be a part of that. Um, if you don't, if you aren't a part of that, you're going to lose because you go into hope that your opponent are, is better than they really are. So playing safe, playing predictable might not actually be worth doing when your opponent actually doesn't have a clue what they should do. So yeah, that will be all of course from Pocket Obvious. This is, like I said, I just wanted to show you the concept and why it's so important to actually talk about it afterwards. And uh, you know, for my money, I love it. I think it's great. And like I said, there, this is not an attack on you know Christian, Nappy, Patters, or Leo or anything. I just want to throw you guys, you know, the concept and why it is so important to realize when you're playing badly, or you realize you're going to play badly, or just overall your general attitude to when you are playing badly. Realize that if multiple people are telling you that you did a bad play, that you probably did a bad play. Don't defend it because it just makes you look. I'm sorry to say it, even worse. I, you don't want to do that. I mean, we all are pocket tubers, and, um, you know, like I said there, I am average at best. It's kind of good to realize that, you know, we have very few pocket tubers that I would say are elite players. That's, that's not going to happen. We are entertainers first. We have to keep that in mind. It just looks pathetic when, you know, you try to do something bigger that you really aren't. It, it's... Uh, you, you don't do that. You're a part of your community. Be a part of that. Embrace it. So with that said, guys, I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you had some situation that you want to, of course, talk about, post it in the comments down below. Tough situations that sadly have went to your demise. I have plenty, too many. I can't even tell you everything. I also have wins due to me playing extremely badly. So that that's something for you. So right, thank you all, of course, for watching, guys. And I see you in the next Pocket Outbooks. Until then. Take care.